Hi everyone, welcome to the tutorial three. In today's tutorial, oh, can you hear me clearly? In today's tutorial, I'm going to talk about the, sorry, I want to remove this. In today, today's tutorial, I'm going to talk about the system properties, convolutions, um, the properties of LTI systems. And also, if, have, if we have enough time, I will guide you through the homework two solutions. In the course, we have studied six general properties of the system for both continuous time input xt and also discrete time signal xn, which are memoryless, invertibility, causality, stability, time invariant, and also linearity. A system is memoryless if the output yt only depends on the input xt at the same time. In other words, um, the system output yt can be explicitly written as g with two variables xt and the current time t. For example, the first, the first system yt equals to t times xt. Since since it only depends on the input xt and also the current time t, it is a memoryless system. Also the same as the second example, the yt is equal to xt when t is smaller than zero. It, it is equal to zero when t is um, greater or larger, greater or equal, greater than or equal to zero. Um, for the third example, however, yt is equal to the integral of x tau from minus infinity to t. It is not memoryless, since it only it not only depend, depends on the current input x t, but it also depends on the input x tau for tau smaller than t. So it is not memoryless. The second property is invertibility. There are two ways for you to check if a system is invertible or not. The first one, you need to see if there is no distinct inputs x1t, x2t that will lead to the same output yt. Or you can see if an inverse system exists that's to say you can use the output yt to express your input xt. The first example, yt is equal to x4t. It is invertible because you can write xt is equal to yt over 4. So it is a, an invertible system. However, for its discrete time version, yn is equal to x4n. It is not invertible. Why? Um, you can check, um, you can give an counter, a counter example. So if I want to get yn is equal to un, can you find two distinct inputs xn that will lead to the same result un? You can give a try. We can see that if xn is equal to un, of course, the output yn is equal to un. But for xn equals to un over 4, when n is a multiple of 4, but 0 other where, it also it will also lead to the same result yn equals to un. So for this discrete time version, it is not an invertible system. Also, the third, the third signal, 
yt is equal to e to the power xt. It is invertible because we can have xt equals to log, log m of yt, the natural logarithm of yt. The fourth signal is also the integral of x tau from minus infinity to current time t. It is invertible because we can write xt to be the differentiator of yt. However, if I write yt equals to the differentiator of xt, it is not inver invertible because the integral, um, because you can find a differentiator of xt or, and also the differentiator of xt plus a constant will give the same result, will give the same yt. So that's to say, if a system is invertible, its inverse system may be or may not be invertible. So the integral and differentiator is the case. The next property is the causality. The a system is causal if the output yt only depends on the input xt at current and also the past time. So um, the first two example, they are memories. So of course, they are also causal. For the third example, we say that it is not memories because it depends on the past time. However, it is causal because um, in the causality, we say that it, um, it can depend on both the current input and also the input at past time. So the next property is the stability. A system is stable if the bounded input xt will also lead to the bounded output yt. The first example is the square of xt. If xt is bounded by capital M, then our output yt is also bounded by M square. So for also the same for the um, exponential of xt. If xt is bounded by M, then the exponential of xt is bounded by e to the power M. Also for the integral, if xt is bounded, um, say x tau is smaller than m, then the integral is smaller or equal to the integral of minus infinite infinity to t of const say constant m. Then we use the calculus um, is equal to m tau from t uh, from minus infinity to t. So then we will have a m times infinity in our answer. So um, that's not bounded. So the integral is not bounded. The next property is the time invariance. A system is time invariant if a time shift in the input x only causes a same time shift in the output yt. That's to say the time shift will give the same version of yt plus t0. For the first case, yt equals to t times the square of xt. It is not time invariant. Why? Actually, it is because of this um, t here. Say, um, now my signal x1t is equal to xt plus t0. Then y1t is equal to t times x to the power 2, um, the square of x1t. So, y1t is equal to t times the square of xt plus t0. 
but my y t plus t zero is equal to t plus t zero times the square of t um, plus t zero. So we we will have different t and also another is t plus t zero. So it is not time invariant. Also, um, it will be the same for the second case. This is quite similar to the homework. So um, for the for x y one t um, when x one t is equal to the shift version, um, it is equal to x t plus t zero. Here t is smaller than zero, greater than or equal to zero. However, for y t plus t zero. Um, it will equal to x t plus t zero for t smaller than t zero, and it is equal to zero for t greater than or equal to this t naught. So I will have different different constant here. For the integral, it is time time invariant. Um, you can easily check that. Oh. Let me check this for you. Um, so for y one t, it is equal to the integral of minus infinity of x tau plus t zero to t zero. For for y t plus t zero, it is equal to the integral of minus infinity in, infinity to t plus t zero x tau d tau. You can um, use the change of variable to, to see that actually these two are the same. So um, I add x tau plus t zero here or plus t, t zero here, they will be the same. So the integral is time invariant. The next one is the linearity. A system is linear if the uh, linear combination of input will lead to the linear combination of the output. Um, the first one is t times um, the square of xt. Um, actually, you can easily see that it's non, it's, it is non-linear because the square of the input, it is a nonlinear operation. But you can also substitute this, um, say x3t is equal to ax1t plus bx2t. It will not give you the, the same result. Also the, um, the second example is yt to the e to the power xt. Um, say a function e to the power something, it is also a nonlinear operation. So in this kind, it, it will not be the, a linear system. And also, uh, if you check the output, the input is e to the power a x1 plus b x2, it will um, equal to a e to the power a x1 times e to the power bx2. So um, it is not a linear combination of the output. For the third case, is, it is the integral. A integral is a linear operation. So the, um, the system is also linear. You can also substitute the input and check that. So next, we will see the linear time invariant system. Uh, we've, we have already studied the linear property and also the time invariant property. Um, for the LTI system, if the input is, the, um, is delta n, and we can get the, out, the output yn is equal to hn, 
We called H and the unit impulse response of our system. And then our output Yn um, will be the convolution of an Xn and also this Hn. The convolution operation, um, also the, um, sorry. The convolution of Xk, um, Xn and delta N will lead to the convolution of X, Xk, Xn times Hn, which is our I'm sorry. So, so now um, my, my input is Xn. Since it's, it is discrete time, we can um, write our uh, signal in the form of this, it is equal to the summation of Xk times delta n minus k. Then since delta n, uh, we put this into our system, it will give the result of Hn. So, so now our result is equal to the summation of k for all, for all k and xk times the Hn minus k. So this is our output Yn. For the discrete time signal, at discrete time system, on Xn, the convolution of Xn times, uh, the convolution of Xn and Hn is equal to the summation of all k, Hk times H, Xk times Hn minus k. And in the continuous time, the convolution of at xt and ht is equal to the integral of um, tau from minus infinity to, to the infinity. And it is integral of the x tau times h t minus tau. The convolution have also have three properties. The first one is commutative. That's to say the convolution of xt and x ht it is equal to the convolution of ht and xt. It doesn't, it doesn't matter the sequence of the um, x or h. The second property is called distributive. That's to say the convolution of xt and h1t plus h2t, you can also um, write it as the, su the sum of the convolution of xt and h1t plus xt convolu convolution with h2t. And the third one is the associative. The convolution of xt and also the second term is the convolution of h1t and h2t. You can actually convolute the first two terms and then convolution, convolution it with uh, H2. It will not change your result. So that's the three properties of convolution. So here is the practice of the convolution in discrete time. Uh, my, sig my signal input is Xn equals to one minus the absolute value of n over five minus one. And my um, unit impulse response is equal to one and for n equal to zero to 10. It, will, it is equal to zero otherwise. So the, uh, the yn is equal to the convolution and here I use, I actually used uh, the convolution of Hn and Xn. I, so I use Hk here and X and minus K here. That's because my H, Hn equals to zero for N not equal to zero to 10. So I can write my sum, summation 
from to be equal to k from zero to ten, and substitute my x x n substitute n minus k to my to my x n, and then I will get this formula. This is the um, output. So uh, the practice. Practice two is quite similar. Um, however, now my x n is changed to sine pi over five n, and my h n is the previous x n. It's equal to one minus the absolute value of n over five minus one, and it is it is also uh, equal to zero for n not equal to zero to ten. So similarly, I use I use the convolution of h n and also the x x n. The h k is equal to zero other, otherwise. So I use the summation can be changed to k equals to zero to ten, and I substitute n minus k to my x n here. I got sine pi over five n minus k, and my h k is equal to one minus k over five minus one absolute. So this is my result. So next we will see the properties of the LTI system. Um, since it is already linear and time invariant, we will check the last. Uh, the four remaining property memories, invertibility, causality, and stability. So for the memory list system, um, it only depends on the input xt. So uh, when you observe the when you observe the convolution, why say the discrete time, why n is equal to um, the summation of x n minus k to the, to h k. Since y n only depends on x n, x n, it does it does not depends on um, x n minus one, n minus two, n plus one, n plus two. So the so we need this h corresponding h k to be zero. That's to say. Um, HK is all zero ex expect for K equal to zero. So H minus two, H minus one, H one, H two, and so on, they are all zeros, but we will have uh, the H zero to be non-zero. So that's to say HN is equal to a constant times a del delta N and my YN is a constant times the xn. So similarly for the continuous time, it it is also ht equals to k delta t, y t is equals to k x delta uh, x t. Um, for for the causality, a causality a causal system. Is that if the output only depends on the current input and also the input of past time? So uh, now my y n can depend on x n and also the x n minus n plus one, n plus one, n plus two. That's the my previous um, input. So I I will need h minus two h minus one to be all zeros. The invertible LTI system, um, the criteria are the same, but now I can uh, give you a form that the convolution of the ori original unit impulse system, unit um, impulse response, and H1n, it is the unit impulse response of my um, 
why is x n minus k times h n but not x n times h n minus k? I, I got a question. Um, do you mean here in in this slide? Because we've we've said that the convolution have have three property, so it is uh, commutative. Commutative means that the convolution of x n and h n is equal to the convolution of x n and uh, x h n and x n. So uh, if if you use this formula to ex um, to express here. You, you will get the same result. So it, it is equal to the summation of h m minus k times h k. So the reason I use which form is for a, uh, yeah. So, so for say, since it um, h, h k is more easier to, um, to change my summation because it's zero otherwise. So I can, uh, I, I would like to use the second form. So you can choose each way you like. So here is the same. Um, you can you can written it as x the convolution of x and h. So um, the, for the invertible LTI system, the unit, the convolution of the unit impulse response of my system and also my inverse system, it should be equal to delta n. So that should say um, an inverse system exists if I put my yn as the input when I put it into the inverse system, it will give me the same xn, which is my previous input. For the stability, um, if x, uh, a, a LTI system is stable, also if the bounded input xt, xn leads to the bounded output yt, yn. Say if the x n is bounded, then um, say my x k is smaller than or equal to x max, then y n is equal to the sum of x k times h n minus k. I also use um, I I use the primitive form, so the convolution of x and h is smaller than or equal to the absolute of two term of these two terms and i since my the absolute of xk is smaller than or equal to x max i explicitly uh, write it here and the remaining term is the summation of the absolute of h n minus k and it is equal to the summation of the absolute of h k so that's to say, um, if I need a bounded output y n, then my sum, the summation of the my absolute of unit impulse response should be finite. Then I will get a stable LTI system. So that's all for the tutorial. Um, do you have questions? So if no. I will go through the homework too quickly. So for the first problem is about the complex number. Um, it, it is very simple, right? So um, the first one, you need to evaluate the normal form and draw, also draw the numbers in complex plane. You, you can use the um, Euler's formula so e to the power i pi over three i equals to cosine pi over three plus j sine pi over three. I forgot the j here. So it is equal to one over four plus plus i times the square three over two. I didn't plot the figure here. Um, never mind. But uh, also for the second one, um, 
minus a times e to the power i and the argument is 4 pi over 3 and you also use Euler's formula to expand it and it is equal to minus 1 over 2 and sine 4 pi over 3 is minus square 3 over 2 and then you get the result is equal to 4 plus i times 4 square 3. And the second one, you need to compute the absolute value and argument of e to the power ln 4 plus i pi over 4. Um, e to the power ln 4 plus i over pi over 4 is equal to e to the power ln 4 times e to the power i pi over 4. e to the power ln 4 is equal to 4 because the exponential of the, log, uh, of the logarithm, they are inverse um, they are a pair of inverse function and they, are, they can be canceled. So it, it will be, it will equal to four. So now um, it is the same as four e to the power i pi over four. Then the absolute value is four and the argument is pi over four. So the third, the third one, uh, use Euler's formula to expand it is equal to a cosine plus i sine plus b cosine minus i sine because the sine of minus i minus beta t is equal to the minus sine beta t. Uh, yeah, so the sine, sine theta is an a odd signal. Um, then you, the, co, the cosine beta t will have a, a constant a plus b. For the i sine beta t, it will have a constant a minus b and they a plus b should equal to 2 a minus b equal to 3 and we will have the result. So the problem too you may find it tedious so because I require you to state the reason so you you cannot on, um, you cannot just guess the result but you need to specify the reason for your answer. Um, for the first one, yt is equal to zero for t smaller than zero. It is equal to xt plus xt minus three for t greater than or equal to zero. It is not memoryless because it depends also on the past time signal xt minus one. It is not time invariant. It is the case in the tutorial. So um, I will have different constant here, t zero t0 here. I use t minus t0 to substitute x1 t. It is not invertible. Um, same, I want to lead to the same result yt equals to zero. Um, then what kind of different inputs? The first one is x1 t equals to zero for all t equal to, for, for all t. Then, then my y1t is equal to zero. And also for x2t is equal to u minus t minus three. And you can check that it will also give, um, how to change the variable to t greater than t zero. Uh, you mean, you mean here, this one? Because um, y t minus t zero, it is a shift version of my original y t. So then I need to change all t to be t minus t zero in this, this equation. So here is x t minus t zero, here is x t minus t zero minus three. Here is also t minus t zero smaller than zero. So it's equivalent to t smaller than t zero. Here t is equal to, uh, you, not, you need to change it to t minus t zero is greater than or equal to zero. So it is equivalent to t um, greater than t zero. Is that your question? Mm, yeah, so 
you can check that the x two t equals to u minus t minus three will also give you y t equals to zero, or for all t. Um, for the linear, um, you can also check it. In, it 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 is written here. It is causal because it only depends on the current input x t and x t minus three is the past. Um, has the signal, so it is causal. And the stable, you can also check check that. The second example, y t equals to x t over four. It is a uh, it is simple case. I I will ignore you here. So for the third one, it is a um, actually is LTI system. So y n is equal to x a minus two, minus two, two times x, a minus eight. It is not memoryless because depends on the past, x and minus two and minus eight are also the, it, it is the past. So it is time invariant. If you change the input x one n to be x a minus n zero, you will get the um, result to be, to be this case and it is equal to y n minus n zero. It is not invertible. Again, I want to get the same result y n equals to zero for all n. The first one is x one n equal to zero for all n. Then my y uh, my y one n will be zero. And the second case, um, you can. You can check this formula. My x two n it is equal to two to the power n over six for n over six to be a integer. It is zero otherwise. For example, you can check y two. Y two is equal to x zero minus two times x minus six. X zero is is two to, to the power zero is one, right? So x minus six is two to the power minus six over six is two to the power minus one. It is minus one half, or it is plus one half. So now my y zero is one minus two times a half. So it's one minus one is, is zero. So um, for, for other case, when n over six, is not integer, it is also zero. So my so now my output y n is equal to zero for all n. So if I ask the invertible property, you can use this um, this method to check it. If you cannot um, explicitly uh, write it as, as say use the um, output to express your input. It is linear and, and it is causal and it is also stable. So for the problem three, you need to uh, discuss actually five case. I, I want to show you the, the picture. I, I draw a picture. So I need to share another screen. So can you see, see the picture? So I need you to, can you, can you see, see? Sorry, I cannot see the chat box. Um, so I, I want you to draw the convolution of these two function xt. It, it is a rectangular function from minus one over two to minus half to half. For the ht is a triangle like uh, function. And then 
you uh, for this case I use the commutative property of the convolution because I want to flip xt. I think uh, the moving um, rectangular is better than a moving triangle. So I use th this equation. It is to uh, equal to the in integral of h tau times xt minus tau. So I draw the h tau here. So uh, the my x t minus tau um, is a moving rectangular. So so gradually I move it from left to right. So uh, when we overlap with the with h tau uh, for the second case for for the first case when when my uh, the lag of my signal 1 over 2 plus t is smaller than minus 1, um, they will not overlap, so it will be 0. For, for uh, the second case, for 1 over 2 plus t is in the range of minus 1 and 0, it, the integral will be, actually it, it is the area of this um, this triangle. So this triangle, actually you can find the, the width is one over two plus T minus minus one. So it is three over two plus T. And also the height, the height will be the same. So it is the area, it is equal to one over two times uh, three over two plus T square. So it will, you give this result. You can also use what we learned. We, we substitute uh, um, the, the signal here and you do the integral, it will be the same. But I think um, because in this simple case, you can, you can just check um, the area of this region. The area the, on this region is one over two times the width and then the height. And also the second, Why not moving the edge T? Why is moving X T? Um, it depends on you. You can you can move edge T, but I choose to move X because I think the rectangular is easier to explain. So it's the same. I think it will be more clear. Yeah, <laughs> it depends on you. How many cases I need to consider if um, if H minus T1? I don't quite un uh, understand this question. How many cases? Um, you just gradually move this rectangular to see that you can um, you can find out how many cases? You just draw it and, and try to explain it, explain, explain it. And then for the next case, um, when you gradually move, say the, you, you need to check the extreme case. The extreme case is that the rectangular cover the left side and slightly you change to, you move to the right and it will, it will cover both the left side of edge tau and minus tau. So it, it is now the, um, the area of this, this region. So this region, I also use the area method. The area method is the rectangular of h tau is equal to one. And I want to minus these two small rectangle, uh, small triangles, two small triangles. At the triangle, you, you calculate the, the width minus one over two plus t minus minus one is one over, um, one over two plus t square. And it will be the same as the height. And for this rectangular, but for this triangle, it is the, the width and height is equal to 
one minus one over two plus t. So it is, it is one over two minus t. Then the area of this region is one minus uh, half plus t square minus half minus t square. And it is equal to minus t squared plus three over four. So you can use integral. The integral will be uh, from minus half plus t to zero. It will equal to tau plus one for, for t greater than zero, but smaller than um, one over two plus t, it will be minus tau plus one. What, it, what is the height of the triangle? Because um, my function is, um, that depends on the slope of my function. So because my function is uh, minus t plus one or t plus one, that's saying this, um, this angle is 45 degree. So for 45 degree triangle, triangle, the height and the width will be the same. So um, that depends on the slow slope of your, say if it's minus, minus two plus one, you need to check the height. It currently will be the, the slope times the width. So, so that's uh, symmetrically for the, for the fourth case and fifth case. And finally, the, the plot will be here. Uh, I see I'm running out of the time. So do you want me to go through other question or I will upload to the Blackboard. You can check the remaining question. So I will end up here. Um, do you want, want to ask other questions? So if not, that will be the end of today's tutorial. Yeah, it will be the same. It will be the same if you move HT. Uh, it will also be five cases. Thank you.